Think of a stealth jet as a magician that never steps on stage, because the trick works best when nobody even knows there's a show. Now imagine handing that magician the master keys to your theater, the lighting desk, and the safe. That is how the story feels when the United States allowed an ally to fly the F-35, a platform built to be the crown jewel of air dominance. It was meant to tip balances carefully, not flip tables dramatically. Yet the moment this aircraft touched Middle Eastern runways, the script stopped being predictable and started being complicated. Before we begin, make sure to hit like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Here is the twist. The F-35 was designed as a quiet thunderclap. Stealth first, situational awareness, second, and raw power humming beneath the skin. It sees without being seen, listens without being heard, and connects combat nodes like a high-speed router that also happens to break the sound barrier. Exporting it was supposed to be controlled like a vault with a whisper-thin keyhole. Then came exceptions, carve-outs, and bespoke tweaks that turned a standard export into something sharper, stranger, and strategically thornier than anyone expected. On paper, the plan was simple. Reinforce a trusted partner's edge while preserving Washington's strategic playbook. In practice, it was like loaning a hypercar to a friend who also runs their own tuning shop. The airframe stayed the same, but the brain gained extra layers. The interfaces grew new branches, and the mission sets multiplied. The ally in question did not just fly the jet. They tailored its inner life. The aircraft became an orchestra pit with a new conductor's baton, still playing the original score, yes, but adding solos that no one had rehearsed in the Pentagon. Why does that matter? Because the F-35 is not only a fighter, it is an airborne data broker. It fuses radar returns, infrared whispers, electronic signatures, satellite hints, and tactical messages into one living picture inside the pilot's helmet. When that fusion engine starts talking to custom electronics, national munitions, and homegrown software trees, you get outcomes that are blindingly effective, and policy headaches that do not fit neatly into any briefing slide. The jet starts operating like a local, with global consequences riding in the back seat. The aircraft itself is a paradox with wings. It is heavy yet slippery, bristling with sensors yet visually barren, designed to carry its teeth tucked away inside to keep the radar silhouette thin as a paper cut. The engine is a single spool thunderheart, famous for shoving a full-size stealth fighter forward like a stone from a sling. Its party trick is not top speed, it is information. The pilot sees a mosaic. The old jets would need a whole squadron and a friendly spy satellite to approximate. Give that to a force that has a habit of innovating under pressure, and you can guess the rest. Policy folks try to keep the genie corked. Baseline software here, compartmented access there, careful lists of what could be swapped and what must stay sealed. But geopolitics moves like a river. It carves its own channels. Workarounds became integration programs, and integration programs became doctrine. The result was a fighter that still answered to the original design philosophy while speaking a new dialect. Local jamming notes, national weapons riding quietly inside, mission apps that mapped to regional realities with an almost cheeky precision. From an engineering seat, it is impressive. From a strategy seat, it is exhilarating and uncomfortable at the same time. Air forces do not just fight, they deter, signal, and sculpt the political weather. A stealth jet in one set of hands can calm a neighborhood. In another, it can rearrange the furniture. Suddenly, patrol lines shifted, rival procurement plans changed tone, and quiet rivalries turned into procurement marathons. The aircraft became both a shield and a conversation starter, the sort that makes diplomats reach for extra coffee. The heart of the tension is a simple sentence with a lot of commas. Protect the qualitative edge, reassure other partners, keep secrets secret, enable real-world effectiveness, and do not let the crown jewels end up as a blueprint on any adversary's desk. The F-35 sits at the intersection of all those commas. Share too little, and the airframe never reaches its potential in allied service. Share too much, and the strategic calculus gets wobbly. Share smartly, and you still inherit consequences because capability always writes its own headlines. Stealth complicates everything. Traditional air power worked like a parade, loud, visible, telegraphed. Stealth works like a rumor that arrives before anyone speaks. When a force can slip sensors, collect data, and leave before the radar wakes up, the map changes. Air defense planners stop thinking in straight lines and start thinking in probabilities. Procurement chiefs in neighboring capitals rethink which radars to buy, which missiles to order, which doctrines to dust off. The jet's presence is like a new operating system. Even those who never touch it must download the patch notes. And then there is the software stack. The F-35's code base updates the way smartphones do, routinely, carefully, and with major features tucked inside innocuous version names. Add national mission data files, tailor electronic order of battle libraries, and build plug-in tools that talk politely to the core, and you get a stealth fighter that behaves like a 
a platform rather than a product. That is wonderful for adaptability and slightly terrifying for policy, because platforms tend to grow ecosystems, and ecosystems do not stay inside fences. Weapons integration is where theory becomes geometry. Internal bays impose size discipline, which nudges nations toward compact guided munitions that slide in without knocking the stealth profile out of tune. Create a smaller seeker here, a revised control surface there, maybe a smarter data link handshake, and suddenly your local inventory steps through the same door as the jet's signatures. The result is not just quiet carriage, it is quiet doctrine, the kind that treats air defense corridors like puzzles rather than walls. Training cycles followed because you cannot toss a pilot the keys to a flying supercomputer and call it a day. Air crew learn to trust sensors that do not behave like old radar screens, to fight inside abstractions instead of raw contacts, to let algorithms rank threats while human judgment chooses timing. Ground crews learned the new rituals of coatings, heat management, and low observable discipline. Planners learn to stack missions around data corridors rather than only around fuel lines and tanker tracks. The jet taught everyone a new grammar. Regional competitors read the tea leaves and reached for their checkbooks. Some eyed stealth of their own. Others doubled down on infrared search and track, multi-band radar meshes, and long-range missiles with seekers that like to hunt at the edge of physics. A few leaned into electronic warfare, betting that noise can blind a ghost. Everyone refreshed their playbooks. The arms bazaar shifted tone from loud horsepower to quiet cleverness, a sign that the F-35's influence is as much cultural as it is kinetic. Diplomacy tried to keep pace. The phrase, qualitative edge became both mantra and math problem. Who gets what, in what configuration, with which switches factory locked, and which doors marked serviceable by local hands? Each answer nudged neighbors, competitors, and even distant observers who care more about precedent than about the region itself. The aircraft moved from catalog item to policy instrument, and policy instruments have long half-lives. You do not just sell a jet, you co-author a chapter in a security novel. Logistics form the invisible skeleton, spare parts pipelines, sustainment metrics expressed as tidy targets like mission-capable rates, and an international support web designed to keep stealth skins healthy and avionics chatty. Every shipment declares the relationship is alive. Every software refresh says the conversation continues. Even fuel becomes political when the engine belongs to a platform that can redraw maps in an evening. Support is not a footnote. It is a strategy with barcode labels. Inside cockpits, the human factor stayed stubbornly central. Pilots grew fluent in sensor fusion the way gamers master minimaps. Not as a picture, but as intuition. They learned when to pull data, when to push, and when to go quiet and let the jet be a shadow. The helmet became a second set of eyes and a third hand, a place where reality and symbology merge. The result is an operator who moves faster than the problem, which is exactly why exporting this capability has ripple effects that live far beyond any runway. There is a nagging question policymakers ask in quiet rooms. Can you put the lightning back in the bottle if the weather turns? The honest answer is that you can manage it, but you cannot reverse physics or memory. Know-how sticks. Tactics travel. Interfaces train neural pathways that do not uninstall. That is not a flaw of the program. It is the price of teaching excellence. When you sell a stealth ecosystem, you sell years of habits, and habits are destiny in combat aviation. Industry watched with interest that bordered on awe. Subcontractors in multiple countries learned how to machine composite curves that behave like secrets, how to build sensors that sip power and spit gold, how to package lethality in volumes that used to hold oxygen bottles. Economic offsets changed hands, joint ventures stood up, and supply chains braided themselves into a tight rope that stretches across oceans. The jet did not just fly, it employed people, trained factories and taught accountants new acronyms. Meanwhile, rival air fleets adapted in ways that do not make headlines but absolutely matter. Older fourth-generation types began flying with bolt-on brains, data links that let them drink from modern networks, pods that sniff the spectrum like truffle pigs, and standoff weapons that respect the stealth jet's rule about distance. You do not have to be invisible to become a better dance partner for someone who is. The ecosystem takes all comers, provided they agree to speak the new language of information first, aerodynamics second. The ethics are thorny. This is advanced force projection married to precision, which promises fewer unintended effects while simultaneously enabling reach that would have sounded like science fiction a decade ago. The responsible path is discipline, strict target vetting, 
proportionality baked into mission planning software, and oversight mechanisms that track not just the bomb's path, but the logic that greenlit it. A stealth jet is a tool. Whether it settles storms or starts them is about rules, not rivets. If there is regret in Washington, it is not about the jet's brilliance. It is about the chessboard behavior that brilliance triggers. Capabilities rewrite trust equations. They spark questions from other partners about parity, from rivals about counters, and from engineers about where the classified line runs through a diagram. The F-35's success turned every export into a policy thesis. Skeptics say the thesis got ahead of the bibliography. Supporters say the thesis prevented worse chapters. Both can be true. Operationally, the aircraft performed as advertised, slipping into contested airspace, mapping threats, and passing data that let other platforms act smarter without ever seeing the full picture. That last part is the special sauce. The stealth jet is a quarterback that does not always throw. It calls audibles. The more a force learns to trust those audibles, the more addictive the capability becomes. When you taste that tempo, older rhythms feel slow, even if they are loud and shiny. There is a financial undertow to all of this. Stealth is expensive in both dollars and discipline. Coatings demand careful hands, hangers need climate manners, and software wants constant attention. Nations sign up knowing the bill will land every year like clockwork. In return, they get an advantage that cannot be bought from a catalog of bolt-ons. That trade is rational, but it is not cheap. The spreadsheet tells one story, the deterrence ledger tells another. A funny thing happened to the definition of range. Before, it was measured in nautical miles and tanker brackets. Now, range includes how far your sensors can see, how securely your networks can whisper, and how long you can stay mentally inside the opponent's decision loop. By that measure, stealth fighters extend borders without moving a fence post. That makes neighbors study radar horizons the way sailors study tides. Geography used to be destiny. The polite phrase is interoperability. The real game is interdependence calibrated with care. You want your partners strong enough to stand firm, but not so decoupled that they can outrun coordination when the weather turns. It is alliance management with a stealth twist. Across the region, procurement strategies now orbit a single question. How do you fight what you often cannot see without becoming the villain in your own budget story? Some bet on multi-band radar constellations and passive receivers that triangulate whispers. Others invest in cyber tools and spectrum tricks that can make even a ghost stumble. A few flirt with their own stealth pursuits, knowing the path is long, costly, and politically bumpy. Everyone, however, reads from the same syllabus, adapt or be mapped. The human narrative within all this is quieter but no less real. Maintainers treat the jet like a living museum piece that also happens to sprint. Planners argue over which data link gets priority and which threat library needs midnight editing. Test pilots chase bugs that hide in the seam between sensational hardware and ambitious software. The machine keeps teaching its crew that modern air power is part aerospace, part IT department, part philosophy seminar about certainty and doubt. When people say regret, what they often mean is friction. Friction between the pristine model where exports behave like brochures and the real world where allies innovate, adversaries learn, and technology refuses to sit still. The F-35's export story did not break any rules of physics. It simply proved the rule that capability breeds consequence. If that sounds ominous, it is also the reason deterrence works. Tools that move the needle will always move debates. There is also a lesson about customization. Allow just enough local flavor and you get buy-in plus performance. Allow too much and you risk creating cousins that share a last name but not a breakfast table. The sweet spot is governance that welcomes cleverness while insisting on architectural hygiene. Keep the core clean, let the edges experiment, and audit like an accountant who never sleeps. That is not glamorous, but it is how you keep a stealth family from drifting into a soap opera. Strategists sometimes frame the jet as a paradox generator. It reduces collateral risk by seeing better, yet it may encourage ambition because it can. It stabilizes by deterring rash moves, yet its very existence can make rivals sprint into costly countermeasures. It is both a scalpel and a billboard reading, do not try me. The trick is to use the scalpel message more than the billboard, to let the quiet competence carry the day while the headlines chase noise elsewhere. Zoom out and the moral is old as air power itself. Technology is policy wearing aluminum. Every rivet line is a sentence in a treaty you may never sign. Every software update a paragraph in a doctrine you may not publicly declare. The F-35, shared and shaped across borders, is proof that hardware can be a relationship. Like any relationship, it thrives on clarity, stumbles on assumptions, and demands maintenance that is equal parts technical and human. If you are looking for a neat ending, stealth is not the genre for that. The aircraft will keep updating, partners will keep negotiating knobs, dials, and limits. 
Rivals will keep probing for cracks in the echo. What began as a sale matured into a living arrangement, the kind where both sides know the address and the spare key code. Regret is too simple a word. The better one is responsibility, because once lightning learns your name, the sky expects you to act accordingly. And so the fighter keeps flying, sometimes seen only by the people inside it, sometimes noticed only by the way other aircraft choose not to go where it just went. It represents trust measured in microns and terabytes, calculated every day by planners who juggle maps, laws, and weather reports. The lesson is not that sharing power is a mistake, the lesson is that sharing power is a craft. Done well, it bends storms away. Done poorly, it invites thunder. The jet does not decide which. People do. In the end, the F-35's journey from American Blueprint to Allied Flightline is a tale of intention colliding with ingenuity. The platform remained true to its design, the context around it learned new steps. If there is a surprise, it is how quickly capabilities become expectations and how expectations become leverage. That leverage can stabilize a region or stretch it. The same airframe, different outcomes, because strategy, like stealth, is as much about what you do not show as what you do. Remember to hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means a lot.